Here's a little possibly rhetorical question that I posed in the comments section of, uh, I think it was Pyro's recent video on consciousness. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, I ingest a hallucinogenic drug and look in the mirror. Um, conventionally, let's say I pop a pill and wait a bit and look in the mirror, and I, lo and behold, I see my face melting. That's kind of a stereotype of the illusion that one is supposed to have when, uh, I don't know, dropping acid or something along those lines. <laughs> what has happened there? What took place? Okay, I think we can say conclusively that um, I was not ac my sensory apparatus were not accurately relaying information to my brain. Um, there was no face there that was melting because my face is not made of stuff that can melt and then when the drugs wore off I could see that this had not happened. Um, a number of people standing around me could then say, could, could have said at the same time, no, your face is not melting. Okay, that's fine and dandy. I can say then that the information received by, say, my brain or my consciousness or whatever was somehow um, garbled or distorted or warped or whatever. Is that all that happened? No. Hmm. Could those people who were standing around me at the time, <clears throat> who were watching the experiment as it unfolded, say that I did not have the experience of seeing my face melt when I looked in the mirror? <laughs> um they can maybe say that I didn't see my face melt because my face didn't melt. Can they say that I did not have that experience? No, they can't. <laughs> they don't have enough information to know whether or not I had that experience. And their apparatus for testing this question or trying to verify or investigating this question is insufficient. Only I know whether or not that experience took place. And to me, that's not enough to say that that experience is unreal. <laughs> Um, because it did patently take place. We're so used to the idea of independent third-party verification that we tend to say that certain things simply didn't happen if they don't, if they're not verifiable that way. So, it's not verifiable. My experiences are not verifiable by someone else. But my experiences are real. Now, think of the implications of that. What does that do to the entire scientific method? I don't really think that it damages it that much, but I think it might shake some people's absolute faith in it. Oh yes, it is very much faith. Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you.